श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे मुंगवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश कारिने वाचा कल्पतरूपा सिंधु पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो महाबदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य गौरस्पे नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधो गोपेश गोपिकांचन गौरांगी वृषभान सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रि जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदा श्रीवासादि गौरभक्त बृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम हरे कृष्ण सो वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर दिस वंडरफुल श्रीरंगम यात्रा सो लाइक वी आर basically from the gaudiya vaishnava sampradaya and uh, our primary worshipable you know deity is the supreme lord krishna that's why there is a very nice shloka is there which told, which talks about aradhya bhagavan rajesha tanaya stardama vandavana so the worshipable deity you no know, for us is aradhya bhagavan this rajesha tanaya so like uh, the son of nanda maharaj you no know, he is our aradhya bhagavan and then uh, like kadam uh, vrindavana so his abode is holy abode vrindavana so it's also very very worshipable for us and then uh, uh, so the best of the devotees are considered to be the gopis you know, who are uh, who have understood the mood of krishna and who has worshiped krishna to the best capacity and then uh, the shrimad bhagavatam pramanam amalam so like shrimad bhagavatam is the ultimate conclusion of all the you no know, spiritual truths and then um, you no know, prema kumarto mahan so the ultimate perfection is to attain krishna prem you no know? so these are the conclusions why we believe in this conclusions first shri chaitanya mahaprabhu matam idam so this is the opinion of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu so this is the uh, idea that we have so now it is the spiritual practice is not just uh, uh, anything and everything doing anything and everything so sometimes like when we go to different devotees houses so sometimes we see that uh, all possible spiritual deities are present in that altar you no know? so like uh, no even vishnu tattvas also like all possible personalities are present so one cannot go back to godhead until unless one is one pointed focused on a uh, no one pointed focus on the supreme lord a particular form of the supreme lord he is very much attached to and he is very much devoted to so if the uh, devotion is all across spread around so then uh, no like uh, it is quite difficult for him to go back to the spiritual world so there is in one in the, the shrimad bhagavatam also there is one uh, pastime where atri muni no like he is performing tapasya and he is uh, you no know, thinking that whoever is the supreme lord you no know, i want to have blessings of that person and then you no know, he is thinking the supreme lord may be creator you no know, he is the maintainer he is the destroyer then finally like uh, he gets darshan of you no know, brahma vishnu and shiva all three of them and then you know, he ask you no know, who wants to use the supreme lord you no know, i was worshiping for the supreme lord and i was confused you know? <laughs> and then the like three of them told see in different ways like you thought about all three of us that's why we all three came so and uh, we see that in order to go back to the spiritual world we have to be very very specific in our worship very clear in our worship and um, whom do we worship like uh, whoever is been you no know, it is not a choice again for us you no know, we don't have much of a choice so whoever is the personality the acharya who has shown mercy upon us and whatever paths they actually mercifully bestow upon us now that's the path that we actually take maybe children should be encouraged to play the other side 
हरिबोल so they can be encouraged to play other side so that we can focus upon the class so uh, this is very very important so as gaudi vaishnavas so our um, worshipable deity is krishna and uh, so we also have other two deities you know whom we very very uh, like worship very uh, dear you know as a dear deities so who are those other two deities no no गौरनिताय गौरनिताय एंड लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ राइट सो वाई वी वर्शिप दीज पर्सनैलिटीज बिकॉज नो लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ इज सेम कृष्ण हिमसेल्फ दिस नॉट अ न्यू इनकारनेशन और नो डिफरेंट इनकारनेशन ऑफ द लॉर्ड इट इज सेम कृष्ण जय गौर सही कृष्ण से जगन्नाथ सो लाइक वी नो इन द वैष्णव भजन लाइक अवर आचार्य स्पोकन अबाउट दिस so jagannath is krishna himself exhibiting the greatest uh, heights of emotions no bliss no that is actually exhibiting and then lord chaitanya is krishna himself in the mood of shrimati radharani right so these are you no know, very important personalities for us because they are non different from krishna and we also worship only vrindavan as our holy dham and because mayapur and jagannath puri are non different from vrindavan so in its true sense it is not like no in that say in that way like we see that this material world is also non different from the supreme lord because it is energy of the supreme lord so but still there is a lot of difference but in terms of mayapur and jagannath puri there is no lot of difference no there is it is vrindavan as it is no so in vrindavan as it is in, like manifested in different moods in different places so in that way like these are also very very worshipable dams no for us so then uh, what are we doing in shirangam no this is not our dham and this is not our worshipable deity no what are we doing here no so like one uh, nice bhajan the dashavatara stotra in uh, sometime in our schedule i think we are going to sing that bhajan also so that is sung by a great devotee called jaydev goswami and he is a very very uh, uh, solid devotee of lord krishna in fact uh, shri chaitanya mahaprabhu also used to uh, no hear no the bhajans of jaydev goswami and uh, his conclusions are considered to be like very amazing and uh, this personality he is glorifying all the different incarnations of vishnu no why is he glorifying all the different incarnations of vishnu and what is the mood in which he is glorifying so one of the stanzas of this uh, uh, what is it uh, dashavat sarastotra all of you know which stanza ha ah, tava kara kamala mare nakam अद्भुत श्रृंगम दलित हिरण्य कशिपु कनुंगमृत नर हरि रूप जय जगदीश हरि सो लाइक नौ हियर ही इज नॉट वर्शिपिंग दीज डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ विष्णु ही इज वर्शिपिंग केशव ही इज वर्शिपिंग कृष्ण ओनली एंड सो ही इज इन फैक्ट वर्शिपिंग कृष्ण एंड ही इज नो टेलिंग दैट ओ कृष्ण हू हेज टेकन द फॉर्म ऑफ नरसिंग देव आई वर्शिप यू no i offer my respectful obeisances unto you so in this way we see that you no know, like wherever the devotee sees you no know, like uh, for example uh, very exalted devotees very advanced devotees so when when they see the uh, dark clouds you no know, so then what do they actually remember you no know, krishna's form you no know, krishna's color you no know, immediately they get reminded of krishna so that is what is a case of a material object like cloud then what to speak of vishnu tattva who is direct expansion of krishna so whenever he sees you know the form of the supreme lord so immediately he gets reminded oh this is an expansion of my lord you no know, krishna so they actually are always krishna conscious so you know, they are always you no know, remembering krishna so this is the mood in which gaudi vaishnavas they uh, visit different uh, holy places and uh, different uh, temples of the supreme lord and uh, they offer the worship in this way right so now here we see um, one of the chapters in chaitanya charitamrita chapter 9 of uh, madhya leela so where lord shri chaitanya mahaprabhu is traveling to different holy places so lord shri chaitanya mahaprabhu Uh, traveling to different holy places in uh, south india 
So first we will read a little bit of summary and then um, we will read some selected shlokas from here, you know, till the point Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reaches, which place? Sri Rangam. <laughs> so now we will read the summary of this chapter. A summary of this ninth chapter is given by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. After leaving Vidyanagara, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited such places of pilgrimage as Gautami Ganga, Mallikarjun, Ahavala Narshima, um, Shid Shiddhavata, uh, Skanda Kshetra, Trimata, Vridhakashi, Buddhasthana, Tirupati, Tirumala, Panaka Narshima, Shiva Kanchi, Vishnu Kanchi, Trikala Hasti, Vridha uh, Vridha Kola, um, Shali Bhairavi, and then he comes to Kaveri River, and then he comes to Kumbhakarna Kapala. So finally, the Lord went to Sri Ranga Kshetra, where he converted a Brahmana named Venkata Bhatta, who along with his family took up devotional service to Krishna. After leaving Sri Ranga, uh, Ch Chaitanya Mahapu reached Rishabha Parvata, where he met Paramananda Puri, who later arrived at Jagannath Puri. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then proceeded further, arriving at Setubanda, Rameshwara. At Sri Shaila Parvata, Lord met Lord Shiva and his wife Durga, dressed in a uh, dressed of a Brahmana and a Brahmin. From there, he went to Kamakoshti Puri and later arrived at Southern Madura. What is the Southern Madura? <laughs> Madurai. No, there is district called Madurai. So that is called a Southern Madura. So, a Brahmana devotee of Lord Ramachandra talked with him. Then Lord took his bath in the river Kritamala on uh, the hills known as uh, Mahendra Shaila. The Lord saw Parashuram. Then the Lord went to Setubanda and took his bath at Dhanushtirpa. He also visited Rameshwara uh, where he collected some papers connecting, connected with Sita Devi whose illusory form had been kidnapped by Ravana. The Lord next visited the places known as Pandya Desh and Tamaraparni River, uh, Naya Tirupati and uh, uh, you know, many other places in the this one. So in this way like uh, he uh, finishes the South Indian Yatra and then enters into little or you know, deep south and enters into Udupi and then later he goes to Maharashtra where he goes to Pandarpur and places like that. So now this Chaitanya Charitamrita in every chapter there is uh, the first shloka as an introduction or the first shloka it gives a gist of the entire chapter. So this particular uh, uh, shloka it talks about what is the kind of people were there in the South India and how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dealt with them. Uh, so like here it is mentioned Nana Mata Graha Gristan uh, Dakshina, uh, Dakshinayata Janat Vipan uh, Kripane Kriparina Vimuchyaitan Gauras Chakre Cha Vibas um, uh, Vaishnavan. So here it is mentioned Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu converted the inhabitants of South India. These people were strong as elephants, but they were in the clutches of crocodiles of various philosophies, <laughs> such as the Buddhist Jain Mayavad philosophies. With his disk of mercy, the Lord delivered them all by converting them into Vaishnavas, devotees of the Lord. Okay. So here we see that uh, nice analogy that is used is Nana Mata, you no, know, like different kinds of philosophies. You no, know, Graha Grastan. Graha means like in Sanskrit it is uh, crocodile. So like uh, the elephant, you no, know, we all know the Gajendra Moksha story. The elephant was very powerful, but then uh, when it is caught by the crocodile and when it fought. No, in a foreign land, you no, know, for a long time. So then the elephant lost its power. You no, know, then the Lord had to come and save the elephant. So in the same way, the South Indians, you no, know, they were, uh, you no, know, as strong as elephants. You no, know, they are very, very educated. They are very scholarly in nature. But then they are caught up with so many different philosophies. You no, know? so Buddhist, Jain, and Mayavad philosophies. You no, know, that is mentioned here. So this is very significant. And uh, in fact, you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in uh, other places, you know, he performed a lot of Sankirtan and things like that. But then in South India, like he engaged with a lot of philosophical discussions you know, with people. So, uh, Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's preaching technique is, like if you are, uh, you know, if uh, the people are very simple and things like that, simply chant Hare Krishna and deliver them. But if they are very hard nut, <laughs> then they have to be like preached, you no know, philosophy has to be preached. No, and things like that. 
So now, um, um, Jay Jay Shri Chaitanya Jay Nityananda Jay Dvaita Chandra Jay Dvaita Chandra Jay Gauravakta Bhandi. So all glories to Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all glories to Nityananda Prabhu, all glories to Advaita Prabhu, all glories to the devotees of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So then, um, like uh, this description is there of different places what we studied in the um, the summary, chapter summary. So when he is going, so there are nice, some nice things are actually um, noted. So he would uh, go to different, different places and wherever he goes, he would find some nice Brahmana house and then there, you know, he would get some invitation and he would accept prasadam there. So that is how like um, the Lord would, uh, you know, go to different, different places. Now when we go, like we have to make arrangement, prasadam arrangement in advance. So, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's formula was, in fact, um, no, it is, uh, a note has been made, made in another uh, section of Chaitanya Lila, where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is going to uh, Jagannath Puri, you know, from Bengal. So, that time, like, uh, he has few of his sannyasi followers. So, all of them are accompanying him. And then suddenly he stops at one place and he asks, you know, whether you have taken anything with you. you no, know, and then the devotees say, like, without your permission, what will we take? We have not taken anything. Then Mahaprabhu says, okay, this is, the, this is the way a renunciant should behave and he should not make too much of arrangement for himself. He should just simply go, you no? Know? No. And depending upon Krishna, he should you know, simply go to different places. So, and Mahaprabhu is, um, is also called as uh, the uh, Sanyas Shiromani. You no, know, he is the uh, crest jewel of all the sannyasis. And today we will also describe and uh, discuss about Brahmanacharya. So, he also had a similar kind of a name. Anybody knows what is the name? He is like best of the sannyasis. The name's meaning is best of the sannyasis. Anybody knows what is the name? Something ends with Raja. Huh? Yeti Raj. Yeti Raj. No, Yeti means a sannyasi. Yeti Raj means, no, like uh, the king of all sannyasis. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also some, you know, Similar to that, and um, he also was uh, no not carrying anything with him. In fact, Ramanacharya's history, if we read, so he also like when he was staying here in Srirangam or in Melkote, so like uh, he would have this daily routine. He would go to um, I think seven or nine houses for bhiksha, you no, know? and that's how it is not that fixed place. You no, know? they would uh, get their food and things like that. So they would have this kind of system, so bhiksha system. And uh, they would not know what kind of menu is going to come, you know, what, how much quantity is going to come and whether it is spicy or whether it is not spicy and things like that. So whatever they would get, Bhiksha, and they would accept it as the mercy of the Lord and they would have. So that is the, this one, that is the way the sannyasis would uh, live. And, uh, you know, here we see that Chaitanya Mahapu is also following similar kind of a routine and he would go to different places and uh, wherever he would get, you know, Prasadam or wherever he would get invitation, so he would accept Prasadam, you know, like that. So, and uh, one nice thing is mentioned, so whenever Mahaprabhu used to travel, so he used to sing one uh, bhajan, it's very nice bhajan, so we'll uh, try to, and it's a name, Nama Bhajan, we'll try to sing this, Rama Raghava Raghava Rama 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 Okay. 
So this very simple bhajan, it has a lot of profound philosophical you know, understanding. So one is that uh, this Pahimam and Rakshamam, what is the speciality of these two words? Pahimam and Rakshamam. Pahi means what? Pahi. Raksha means protection. Pahi means maintenance. No? So there are two things that are there in the principle of surrender. So the principle of surrender is sixfold, and it is also very apt. No, that we are discussing the principle of surrender in this holy place of Sri Rangam. So for the Sri Vaishnavas, you know, this is the life and soul. <laughs> they call this as prapatti. You no, know, prapatti or prapanna or surrender you know, is the uh, life and soul of a devotee. You no, know? so that is a process. Like if we want to attain something, if you see all the yoga systems. Like uh, they are a tool, they are a sadhana. No, sadhana is for the purpose of attaining a goal. No, that is sadhya. So our sadhya is to attain Krishna. And how do we attain Krishna? By the process of surrender. No, and in the process of surrender, six items are there. One is you no know, that which is favorable to uh, the attainment of the goal. So that needs to be uh, followed, and that which is unfavorable that has to be given up. And then to have complete faith that Lord will protect me and maintain me. You know, the third and fourth principle. The Lord will protect me and the Lord will maintain me. And then the fifth principle is um, the maintaining the mood of humility. And sixth principle is you know, completely offering oneself. Complete surrender unto the com uh, Completely offering oneself in the service of the Lord. So now in the six principles, this middle two principles are very, very important. You know, like um, uh, no, uh, having or like accepting the maintenance of the Lord, accepting the Lord as my maintainer and not my uh, boss as the maintainer or company as my maintainer. No, maybe we, we are getting our salary from there. No, but then we should understand that our salary is coming from the Supreme Lord. So he is the one who is actually supplying all the needs and necessities of me. And when we have that mood, our retirement will become very easy. No, so we will not think that, away. no, now... Uh, if my salary stops, no, how will I maintain myself? So if we have always thought that the Lord is my actual maintainer, one day salary stops, still no, we will continue to get maintained, you know. So we will not be you know, so much affected by that, right? So in fact, uh, in Chaitanya Chaitamrita itself, the famous pastime Brigari, the pastime of Brigari, where Narad Muni is actually telling this. Now he is telling that. No, you are doing sinful activity of killing animals and maintaining yourself. You give up this job. No, you break your bow and give up this job of you no know, killing animals, right? So we are not directly killing animals, but we are working for companies which are indirectly killing animals. <laughs> no, <laughs> but someday we also have to give up. We cannot continue on with this uh, uh, corporate jobs no forever. So no, we have to take up the job of devotional service to the Supreme Lord at some point in time. So now uh, Narad Muni is telling that you break the bow and Brigari is asking, no, this is the only profession I know. Apart from this, I don't know any other profession. How will I maintain myself? And Narad Muni gives her, like, uh, sometimes it may look like a false promise. So he tells that, no, don't worry. I will supply whatever is needed for you every day. You know? First of all, he himself doesn't have a standard supply. No, he's a sannyasi and no, he is also following similar kind of vritti. He doesn't know where from his food is going to come next day. And he is promising, I will supply you everything. And then he gives this promise and he goes off. He doesn't even watch like, you know, how to fix this promise. Why? You know, Prabhupada writes a very wonderful purport there. You no, know, like Narad Muni just clarified. You no, know, he didn't, if Narad Muni would have told that Krishna will supply, Mrigari would have told, who is this Krishna? I don't know. <laughs> How will I believe him? How will I depend on him? 
and uh, but narad muni like uh, grigari saw narad muni you no know, bringing back all the animals back to life you no know? like whatever animals he had half killed so like uh, you no know, narad muni cured all of them so when narad muni told i will supply grigari could able to faith in him you no know? so in that way like he told so but then in the purport you no know, shila prabhupad actually you no know, clarifies very nicely so it is only krishna ekva bahunam yo vidadati kama it is only krishna who is fulfilling the needs and necessities of all the living entities and it is not the the hunter was thinking that it is my bow which is you no know, maintaining my family but actually krishna is the one who is maintaining the family and uh, narayanuni told okay no he knows perfectly that krishna will maintain and then he told that okay no you give up you no know, your uh, hunting profession and then you no know, mrigari had faith in narayanuni and he gave up the hunting profession and uh, he could uh, get very wonderful maintenance in fact the next time when narad muni you no know, came he told you no know, like there is too much of supply you are sending maybe you have to reduce your supply <laughs> so that is the level of uh, maintenance of the lord so sometimes you know this uh, principle has been told that if an ordinary material boss can maintain so nicely by giving so much of salary the supreme boss krishna will he not be able to maintain the living entities no so he will very nicely maintain so in this way like this pahi maam and raksha maam is very very important and another thing in this bhajan is this rama raghava rama raghava rama raghava no pahi maam and krishna keshava krishna keshava krishna keshava raksha maam so one of the important teachings of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu is the holy names of the lord is not different from the supreme personality of god and here no shri chaitanya mahaprabhu is constantly no is chaitanya mahaprabhu is acting as a devotee he himself is supreme lord so but when he is acting as a devotee and he is demonstrating you take the names of the supreme lord and have complete faith the supreme lord is present in this names and then take shelter of him and you no know, believe that he is the maintainer and believe that he is the protector so in this way like uh, it's very very intense you no know, he actually you no know, he keeps chanting this particular bhajan and it is mentioned at the beginning of the south indian yatra so it is mentioned chaitanya mahaprabhu constantly used to recite these prayers you no know? and then um uh, e shloka pate padi kharila prayana gautami gangaye khaila ganga snana so while walking on the road chaitanya mahaprabhu used to chant this rama ragava mantra and chanting in this way he used to uh, he arrived in the gautami ganga and he took bath so then he visits many many different places mm. so then um, at one place he actually came to a um, he came to a place where he met a very nice uh, uh, brahmana you know who was worshipper of lord ramachandra and he was constantly chanting the names of lord ramachandra and then um, so he did not this brahmana did not speak any other word you no know? he would uh, like for everything you no know, please take prasadam you no know, he would show the plate and say ram ram you know? so like that so everything is you no know, everything is fully you no know, lord ram's name right so that is how he was there and uh, that day you no know, chaitanya mahapu actually accepted prasadam at the brahmana's house and he bestowed his mercy upon him and then the lord proceeded ahead and uh, so after going to few places um so mahaprabhu again he came to this brahmana and then he saw that this brahmana is now chanting krishna's names previously he was non stop he was chanting you no know, lord ram's name and now he is chanting hare krishna mahamantra so then uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu is asking you no know, what happened to you no like previously you were chanting the names of krishna sorry chanting the names of ram so now why are you chanting the names of krishna so then he is telling that formerly um no i was uh, no formally i was chanting the names of rama but it is all due to your influence no after seeing you like uh, my long practice of chanting the names of lord rama no it has got broken no and now i have started chanting krishna's names no and um, so then he is telling since then the okay so from my childhood i have been chanting the holy name of lord ramachandra but upon seeing you i chanted the holy name of lord krishna just once since then the holy name of krishna has been tightly fixed upon my tongue indeed since i have been chanting the holy name of krishna the holy name of lord ramachandra has gone far away so from my childhood i have been collecting glories of the holy name from revealed scriptures and one of the nice glories he is quoting here 
रमंते योगिनो अनंते सत्यानंदे चिदात्मनि इति राम पदे नाशु परम ब्रह्म अभिधीयते सो द सुप्रीम अब्सोल्यूट ट्रूथ इज कॉल्ड राम बिकॉज द ट्रांसेंडेंटलिस्ट टेक प्लेजर इन द अनलिमिटेड ट्रू प्लेजर ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल एक्जिस्टेंस सो राम मींस अनलिमिटेड स्पिरिचुअल ब्लिस नो एंड सो ही इज कोटिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर श्लोका एंड देन ही आल्सो गॉट अदर श्लोकास व्हिच टॉक्स अबाउट कृष्णास like glories krishna's holy names glories krish um, krishir bhu vachaka shabdo nascha nivrutir vachaka tayor aikyam param brahma krishna iti abhidiyate the word krish means the attractive feature of the lord's existence and na means the spiritual pleasure um, so when the verb krish is added to the affix na it becomes krishna no which indicates the absolute truth and then um, uh, so both these names like both the glories he knows and then he also got the another uh, this one another glories of the lord rama's name ram ram rameti rame rame manorame sahasra nama stulbyam ram nama varanane so this all of them who knows the vishnu sahasra nama so they know this shloka also that thousand names of vishnu is equal unto three times chanting lord ramachandra's name and then uh, there is another shloka is there sahasra naam naam punya naam tri avritya tu yat phalam uh, eka avritya tu krishnasya naam ekam tat prayachati so the pious results derived from chanting 3000 names of vishnu or three times no uh, three uh, 3000 names of vishnu three times can be attained by only one utterance of the holy name of krishna so that means uh, no it is no this all these uh, glories of the holy name he has been collecting this brahmana has been collecting from the childhood so he knows that krishna's holy name is much more powerful than lord rama's holy name so uh, because of krishna being the absolute personality of god and then the supreme lord in his full feature so like we all know from the description of the vedas that uh, you know the supreme absolute truth or the supreme lord is one entity one person and then his different incarnations when he takes it is like the full moon and the partial moon the partial moon is not cut to pieces you no know, it is the same moon but a half portion of it is displayed you no know, that is how the partial moon actually comes so in the same way when krishna hides certain of his qualities you no know, he takes different avatars you no know. it is one person the supreme lord vishnu and or krishna so when he hides certain qualities then you no know, he takes different avatars so you no know, he knows this brahmana knows all these things but still he was very much attached to the chanting of names of rama so but then uh, when he met the devotee you no know, when he met you no know, the topmost of all devotees you no know, that is sri chaitanya mahaprabhu so then immediately he got affected you no know, by the holy name of uh, you no know, krishna and from then on you no know, he started chanting the holy names of krishna so now um, after this no mahaprabhu actually appreciates him and then you no know, he uh, moves on from that place and then he goes to different different places as we saw vridha kashi and then um, he met uh, uh, there he also met some um, tarkavadis and mayavadis and sankhya philosophers and uh, patanjali followers that is yoga you no know, followers and um, you no know, different different kinds of followers you no know, he is actually meeting and then he comes to a place where he um, and he uh, has discussions with all these different philosophers and he defeats them and then he comes to a place where he meets a, a buddhist philosopher and this buddhist philosopher you no know, he actually comes to put forward his philosophy and then uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu actually defeats that philosophy also you know and uh, you know shila prabhupad very elaborately gives the you know what is buddhist philosophy and how shri chaitanya mahaprabhu actually opposed to that particular philosophy so just one point in that so the buddhist actually understand that creation is eternal and ultimate perfection is to annihilate oneself and mahaprabhu uses a simple logic you no know, if you believe creation is eternal and then ultimate philosophy is annihilate everything so then uh, it this itself becomes inconsistent you no know? so with them we cannot argue with vedas because they don't accept vedas you no know? so they have to be argued with uh, logic and things like that so in this way he uses multiple logics and then he defeats the buddhist philosophers and then finally like um, 
know, when these Buddhist philosophers were defeated, so they became very ashamed and they made a plot. You know, they, uh, you know, they brought a huge plate of um, you know, obnoxious foodstuffs, you know, which is uh, like maybe the this one, uh, what is it, uh, Mamsa and uh, Mamsahara. And then they presented it to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saying it is Mahaprasad. And uh, just to like uh, take revenge on him. So that time, suddenly a bird appeared over there. It picked up the plate, you know, and bird, a big eagle, you know, it appeared, it picked up the plate and threw all the no non-vegetarian food on top of his Buddhist. And then um, it threw the plate on the head of the Buddhist guru, you no, know, and he you no know, fell unconscious. And then all the disciples of the guru, you no, know, they were telling that you no, know, we accept you as the supreme lord. No, please be merciful upon our Guru. Please, no, bring him back to life. So then uh, Mahaprabhu told, no, he taught them the chanting of the names of the Lord. And then he told that you chant these names in the ears of your Guru, he will come back to life. Literally what happened, Mahaprabhu initiated those Buddhist followers and through them he initiated their Guru. <laughs> he made the disciples as Guru and Guru as disciples. No, he reversed the whole thing. And then um, all of them became Vaishnavas and they, you know, uh, they became the followers of Lord Chaitanya. And then, um, so in this way, like uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going through different, different uh, tracts of land in the South India. And uh, you know, it is one thing that is noted is South India is a tough nut. You know? So that is very clearly noted. <laughs> so to make South Indians as devotees is very difficult. You know? They will have so much of argument. So much of logic and it is quite, quite difficult, you know. And, uh, no, one important thing is like we know everything, you know. That will, that will be a very important, this one. You know, if you are preaching is quite difficult. So, but then if somebody follows the footsteps of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one important thing that Mahaprabhu often uses in the preaching is that uh, his intense absorption in the chanting the names of the Lord. So, be it, uh, you know, in the Bengal, during that time, it was, uh, the Mohammedan rule was there. They were like quite plus sometimes in um, like, you no know, finding, you no know, people who are deviant. You know, they catch them and they kill them also. And then uh, there are many different uh, obstacles at many places were there. And Mahaprabhu used a simple weapon, you know, his deep absorption in Krishna consciousness. So, whenever people would see, whenever these, uh, you know, Mughal, Patans, you know, all these different people used to see, and they used to try to chastise Mahaprabhu. So, but then seeing his absorption in, in Krishna consciousness, they would not be able to, you know, chastise him, or they would not be able to harm him. So, rather they would become devotees. So, this is, for tough nuts, the important thing is, so we also have to become very tough nut in Krishna consciousness. You know, we also have to become more deep in practicing our Krishna consciousness, right? So, in this way, like, you no, know, Mahaprabhu actually goes to different, different places and finally comes to, you know, uh, Tirupati and after Tirupati, like, he goes to few other places and then, you know, Panaka Narasimha in, uh, like, uh, in Andhra region and then he comes to uh, Shiva Kanchi and Vishnu Kanchi and then finally he comes to the Sri Ranga Shetra. So, this Shiranga is like, um, it's a very, very special place. Um, it's, you know, considered to be like, for the Sri Vaishnavas, it is considered to be the, like, uh, very, very important place. You know, for Sri Vaishnavas, which are all important places, Shirangam is one place, then Tirupati, Kanchipuram, and then very near to Belkot, you know, very near to Bangalore. Melkote. <laughs> so these four places are considered to be very, very special for them. And um, you know, they, uh, their main uh, uh, like head of the institution, so generally they would reside in the Srirangam. So, and here also, like we see that uh, in Srirangam, like, um, uh, so later you will hear about the glories of the Srirangam from other devotees. So, but here, the background of Ramanucharya, like a little bit, very, very just, you know, we will see. Um, Ramanuja, the name itself says that he is the younger brother of Lord Rama, Rama Anuja, you know, Rama Anuja. So, like, um, he is, um, like, uh, considered to be an incarnation of Lakshmana, very, <laughs> very, very powerful Acharya. 
so it is whenever these powerful acharyas appear so we have to be like uh, very grateful to the supreme lord it is the great mercy of the supreme lord that these the powerful personalities they actually descend upon this you know material world so just to give us the proper philosophy of krishna consciousness the proper practice of krishna consciousness so that we can be delivered you know from the cycle of birth and death so now um, so the um, uh, preceptors or the previous generation of ramanucharya so they were uh, devotees like natha muni and then his descendants like uh, were very you no know, nice uh, vaishnavas and then in that you no know, family you no know, there uh, came a very powerful acharya called yamuna acharya uh, so like uh, so then um, so there is uh, this uh, ramanu acharya like uh, he was um, he was a resident of uh, uh, later he shifted to kanchipuram so it is mentioned his his uh, father's name is keshava dikshita and then wife's name is kantimathi and then uh, i was very uh, surprised to see that uh, you know they worship for a son you no know, in a very famous temple you no know, the south indians will know that temple especially chennai vasis will know that temple ha huh? parthasarthi temple yeah so parthasarthi temple from triplicane so like uh, these ramanuja's parents you no know, they actually worship parthasarthi and then they got this illustrious son ramanuja and then uh, so the early life of uh, ramanucharya was that he was uh, living in kanchipuram and then he was you know his father was very um, amazing personality and he taught him all the wonderful you no know, vedic scriptures and things like that and all so but at some point in time you no know, ramanuja like lost his father so after that you no know, they were seeking you no know, some other tutorship and uh, you no know, some or other they landed up in the uh, school of yadava prakash so yadava prakash was a mayavadi you no know, guru and uh, so like uh, ramanuja was like very very bright student so anything you no know, he is incarnation of lakshmana so like what to speak of his uh, scholarship so he was very very bright student anything that he would hear immediately he would memorize and he you no know, he would be able to understand the meanings and he would explain and things like that so very soon he became a pet student of the yadav prakash so but then over a period of time so there arise some differences so because yadav prakash used to describe the supreme lord or supreme absolute truth as nirakara brahman and then um, so ramanuja would uh, sometimes counter argue or counter present you no know, his understanding as uh, the supreme lord as a beautiful person so one time it went to a heights you no know, where uh, there was a shloka so which had this word kapisam no kapi asam so like uh, this for, which described the eyes of the lord and uh, so this yadav prakash took the literal meaning of that and he explained so this means the back portion of a monkey you know how reddish it is and that is how the lord's eyes are <laughs> so that time ramanuja was engaged in massaging his guru's feet and then he could not he could not tolerate this explanation of his guru and then uh, you no know, he started shedding tears you no know? and it was tears of deep uh, you no know, misery deep agony and these tears were super hot and they fell upon the guru's feet you know when he was massaging and the guru got disturbed and he got up and he asked like what happened to you so then he told like no i am distressed upon you no know, hearing your explanation of this particular words and then the guru told no what do you think you are you no know, much greater than me so do you have any better explanation than so then he explained so this words you no know, this very nicely it is mentioned here so gapi jalam pibat no kam jalam pibati no there is a word that is there whoever is um, no drinking water no who is drinking water the sun is actually evaporating water and drinking water so the sun also has a word, has a name called kapi no ka you no know, comes from the kam and pibati you no know, pineka like from there the p comes so like kapi also means the sun and then asam also means uh, you no know, that which blossoms or that which causes things to blossom 
and sun causes some things to blossom. You know what is that? That is lotus. You know, sun causes the lotus to blossom, and the Lord's eyes is you know the it is like the lotus petals. You no, know, like that. So when he gave this, so Yadav Prakash, you no know, kind of saw that. Okay, this is like uh, this is a very wonderful explanation. This boy gave a very wonderful explanation. So, but then it is going towards the personalism or personal worship of the Lord. So he just appreciated and externally appreciated. Internally, he didn't like it. So then, uh, so this over a period of time, this thing you no know, kept on increasing. So in many places, Ramanuja would uh, give different explanations. And Yadav Prakash, he thought that this guy would be if we allow him to grow up, and if he grows up, and then if he establishes his philosophy. So our Mayavad philosophy will not have any place to stay. You no, know, this guy has to be finished. You know. So then they made a plan that we will go to Tirtha Yatra. You no, know, from Kanchipuram they made a plan. We will go to you no know, Ganga Stan and uh, you no know, where Ganga River is there, and we will go to go, go there and take uh, bath over there. And their plan was to you no know, finish Ramanuja on the way. Right. So like uh, so when they went, you no know, Ramanuja's another uh, cousin, I think. No, Govinda. No, he was also there in the same school. So, like both of them were studying the Mayavad philosophy. So, but then um, uh, he was knowing about the secrets of the guru, and uh, the guru had you no know, informed uh, some confidential disciples that we will take Ramanuja and we will finish him. So then uh, this Govinda had you no know, mentioned to Ramanuja that uh, you no, know, like this there is a plan to kill you is happening. So you should escape. And Ramanuja actually ran from that camp. No, without seeing anywhere, deep in the jungles, no, he just ran, 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 no, to a faraway place. And when the guru and the disciples, no, when they got up after a night's sleep, they got up and they saw this guy is not there. So then uh, they thought that okay, no, some wild animal would have eaten him, no, or uh, killed him and things like that. They were so happy. No, they were thinking that after killing him, no, killing a brahmana, we will get sin, and we will go to Ganga and take bath and no, clear the sin. These people did not even know. The what is that uh, seventh offense to the holy name? No, Nam no Bala Deshehi Papa Buddhi. So we cannot no commit sin and then wash off no the sin by com, no performing a, a devotional activity. So they did not know because they are of course no, they are Mayavad philosophers. No, like Krishna Surya Sama Maya Hai Andaka Yaha Krishna like Taha Nai Maya Radhika. So like they don't have Krishna with them. So naturally they were covered by the illusion. So they were making such kind of plans. So now they thought, okay, fine. No, we don't need to commit any sin. We don't need to kill a brahmana. So he is automatically killed. So they would not think by the will of the Lord because no. So they don't believe in the Lord actually, Mayavadis. So like, um, so then Ramanuja, when he travelled deep dense into the forest, and he felt very tired, and then he fell asleep, no, in some place. And then next day he gets up, and then he sees, no, that. Uh, one hunter and a like uh, a couple, you no know, hunter couple. You no, know, they are actually passing by, and they are telling that uh, you no, know, we want to go to Rameshwaram. You no, know, we are going for a pilgrimage to Rameshwaram. So it is very unusual, quite unusual. Hunters going to <laughs> pilgrimage and <laughs> that over Rameshwaram. So then, um, like, uh, you no, know, if you like, you no, know, you can accompany with us. And Ramanuja thought, okay, anyway, I have to go to south, so I can go with these people. And then at some point in time, so these uh, the hunter's wife. No, she asks, can you bring us some water? So, and then Ramanuja goes down to a well you know, in the forest and then he picks up some water. You know, he drinks some water and then he picks up some water and brings back. You know? When he comes back, this hunter and wife is not there. And then uh, the dense forest is now looking like a city with a lot of temples and gopurams and things like that. And he's asking nearby people, like, you know, where is this place? And he's telling, like, the people are telling that it is Kanchipuram. And then, like, uh, no, Ramanuja's own place. And then he's thinking, yeah, like, this is my own, my own hometown. <laughs> you know, how did I come here? So he was so much surprised. You no, know, it is the same Supreme Lord and his consort, the, the Supreme Lord Narayana and Lakshmi. You no, know, they personally came and they protected Ramanuja and then they brought him to uh, this Kanchipuram back. And then uh, he goes and tells all these things to his mother. And the mother says, okay, fine, like, you know, we should not take uh, these things very seriously. No, just forget it and, you know, be humble. So then uh, when Yadav Prakash comes back, you know, with his party, like Ramanuja again goes to the school. 
not to again get admitted and yadav prakash is like terrified seeing ramanuj no how is this guy this guy is still alive and then he is so humble and he is approaching for studies and uh, so like uh, yadav prakash thought that okay maybe like this guy doesn't know my plot and somehow something happened and he got lost and he came back you know and again he was accepted in the school so then we discussed about yamunacharya right so from nathamuni's uh, family so like um, this yamunacharya was a very powerful acharya he was the head of shri vaishnava uh, line and he was aging also and uh, he was constantly thinking that after me there is no powerful personality who is there to protect this shri vaishnava community so so once he came to um, from shirangam he came to kanchipuram and then on the way like he saw this yadav prakash uh, school you know like all the disciples you know they are all walking by and then uh, when he is seeing this group you know he is seeing ramanuja a very illustrious very glowing personality so that time itself he takes note this boy is very very nice but then unfortunately he is studying in the you no know, like uh, school of mayavadis so like maybe like lord ranganath may bestow his mercy upon him so when he prayed like that so then uh, after some time there is the difference between yadav prakash and ramanuja became too heavy and then at one point like uh, sarvam kala vidam brahmam so like it's a very very famous shloka of mayavadis like everything that exists is brahman so easy you know so like uh, for that shloka ramanuja gave a personalistic explanation you know how everything that exists is energy of krishna and everything is non different from krishna and things like that so when yadav prakash heard this he told you are not faithful to our no our conclusions of scriptures you are no more no allowed in the school you get lost no he was thrown away from the school and this is the mercy of yamuna charya's prayers <laughs> so like a great devotee no he prayed for ramanuja so then he was thrown out from the no mayavad uh, sampradaya so then um, after that he was thinking i don't have a guru no i don't have any shelter so i need some guidance in the practice of krishna consciousness so then he approached another devotee called kanchipurna no who was um, who was a shudra by birth but then he was very exalted devotee you know very very exalted devotee and then um, he used to serve you know this kanchipurna and he used to like take uh, guidance from him and then um, so but he used to ask you no know, you accept me as as your disciple so but then uh, kanchipurna would say like no i am a shudra and you are a brahmana it is not very appropriate you no know, for me to give initiation and ramanuja say you no know, what is the point of considering this uh, like uh, no qualifications by birth you are such a advanced devotee you no know, you should give me initiation but still he would not accept so but then he was um, um, what is it uh, so then um, uh, ramanuja he was very eager uh, you no know, to have uh, the this one have a spiritual master at that time yamuna charya grows really very old and then you no know, he was very very anxious to get ramanuja you not know, to shirangam so he got to know that ramanuja was expelled from mayavad school so then uh, he was interested in bringing to shirangam and he sent some devotees to get him so by the time ramanuja could go back so already you no know, yamuna charya had passed away so but then like he sees that you know when yamuna charya's final rites were no being performed so that time he sees three fingers of yamuna charya's hand is still like no closed and ramanacharya asks like uh, no to all his disciples is this the mudra which our guru no has all the time so then they all say like no no this is unusual like no he never keeps his hand like this so then uh, ramanuja <laughs> so ramanuja spontaneously he actually mentions that uh, uh, he tells that i'll dedicate my life to the vaishnava faith i'll save those who are deluded in ignorance by bestowing upon them this uh, by the initiation the pancha samskara so and uh, the, i will teach uh, the process of uh, sharanagati you no know, prapatti you no know? so when he mentions this so yamuna charya's one finger gets opened up you no know? and then he tells that uh, i shall write a commentary on vedanta sutra so of badarayana so badarayana was a very 
uh, you know, famous commentator or uh, on the this one of Vedanta Sutra, and um, then um, uh, in in line of the previous Acharya's commentaries, so when he mentions this, so another finger gets opened up, and then the Lord mentions, oh, sorry, uh, Ramanuja mentions that in the memory of great uh, sage Parasara, so I will also name a disciple you know, of in the name of Parashara, who you know who will be a very great devotee. So. Like the next successor to Ramanuja was this Parasara Bhatta. <laughs> so, like uh, when he mentioned these three things, so uh, Yamuna Charyas, like you no know, three fingers got opened up. So, then uh, all the other disciples of Yamuna Charya, so they all uh, took a note of this and then uh, they all, uh, in heart, they all accepted Ramanuja as the next successor. <laughs> as the next successor. So, but then, um, no, he. Like after this incident, like after you no, know, um, uh, like uh, passing of Yamunacharya, so Ramanuja did not stay in Srirangam. He did not even take darshan of Ranganath. No, he thought that <laughs> the Lord is not uh, merciful to me. Why he thought the Lord is not merciful to me? Huh? Because the Lord did not allow Ramanuja to meet with Yamunacharya. So, like, uh, you know, Ramanuja would tell, it seems, to his disciples, if the Lord would have allowed me to meet Yamunacharya, I would have preached, you no know, hundred times more vigorously. <laughs> so, like that. So, you no, know, but I could not get the association of, uh, you no know, pure sadhu. So, in that way, like, he would have, you no know, this, this one. And he did not even take darshan of Ranganath. He went to Kanchipuram back. So, but then, uh, back in Srirangam, so all the disciples of Yamunacharya, they are all having... Uh, Serious discussion. So after you no know, our uh, great spiritual master Yamunacharya, so we are not having any direction. You no, know, we are not having like such strong guidance. So and everybody you no know, came to us common consensus. We have to call Ramanuja, you no know, whom uh, Yamunacharya himself uh, spelled out. You no, know, he will be the next successor. So but then one big problem is there. What is the problem? So like uh, Ramanuja. Is not at initiated. <laughs> so the next successor is not at initiated. <laughs> so, like that is the state of existence over there. And then they designate Mahapurna, you know, one of uh, one of uh, the disciples of uh, Yamunacharya, that you go give him initiation and bring him to Srirangam and make him the you know, like uh, the uh, chief of our this one. And meanwhile, Ramanuja also gets message from. Lord, uh, no, Varadaraj, that uh, no, Mahapurna will be your spiritual master. No, he was also very much praying. No, I don't have a spiritual master. No, I want no spiritual guidance and things like that. And when they get to know, so like uh, Mahapurna is running from there, from Srirangam to Kanchipuram, and Ramanuja is running from Kanchipuram to Srirangam. No, so both of them have one goal that is to like one is to give initiation, and is to take take initiation. And in midway, they both meet, and when they meet. So, like, uh, you no know, Mahapurna tells that, like, you no, know, you have to, you no, know, I have been sent to give initiation to you. And uh, Ramanuja also tells, like, I am also running to get initiation from you. So then uh, they say, like, uh, you no, know, uh, then Mahapurna says, okay, we'll go to Kanchipuram in front of your Ishtadev Varadaraj, you know, we will perform the initiation ceremony. So then uh, Ramanuja says, that what is the guarantee I'll live till then? Till then. Well, this is already I lost one chance, you no? Know? I was about to be initiated by Yamunacharya, so but I lost chance. You no, know, by just few, you no, know, few days or few hours or so, like you know, I could not get darshan of that great personality, and I could not get initiation. No, I don't want to take risk again. No, you give me initiation here, you no, know, in middle of jungle. No, it is nothing. Like you no, know, you give initiation here only. So then, um, so this is often uh, highlighted and glorified. How Ramanuja was so eager to take you no know, initiation, so eager to accept a spiritual master and practice Krishna consciousness. So, in the practice of Krishna consciousness, so one of the preliminary angas, you no know, very, very important you know, preliminary angas is then to accept a bona fide spiritual master. You know? And um, then Ramanuja was um, you no, know, again he was living in um, uh, Kanchipuram, and now, like Mahapurna, after giving initiation, so he was no, petitioned by Ramanuja that uh, you please stay at our house and please accept our hospitality. So then uh, uh, 
Mahapurna was uh, you know, hosted in Ramanuja's house. And um, Ramanujacharya's wife was so much of caste conscious, you know. So she was thinking, we are from a very high grade Brahmana family. And uh, though Mahapurna is the guru of my you know, husband, but still he is not from that you know, high class Brahman family. So, and uh, both the wives of Ramanuja and wife of uh, Mahapurna both were taking you know, water from the well. And uh, Mahapurna's wife's you no know, pot from there, little water had fallen into her pot. And she was, she got so much of anger. How can you no know, such a you no know, like uh, anartha can happen? You no know, like how can uh, you no know, like you people don't have any etiquette? You no know? like don't you understand? Like uh, you no know, we are from a high grade brahmana family, and you no know, you may be like uh, wife of my husband's spiritual master, but that doesn't mean you can do all these kind of things. And then she blasted at her like anything. And uh, you no know, sometimes when I discuss this, so one mataji told like you no know, this is the way matajis are. You no know? <laughs> like what to do. <laughs> So sometimes, so like, uh, you know, in, in our Narshmi Giridari Mandir, so one time this kind of argument was happening and I was there in the temple, you know, in the office. So, and then uh, like uh, our Mataji, the deity worship head, so she told, no, Prabhuji, you are not experienced of this. No, this is the way we all, you know, deal with. <laughs> and then she said, like, no, I don't want to have this experience. <laughs> no, please bless me. <laughs> no. So then, uh, anyways, so then, uh, so like, uh, after knowing this, so like Mahapurna's wife did not make a big fuss out of this. And she just told the Mahapurna and Mahapurna understood that, you no, know, this place is not suitable for us without any, without telling anything. So they just vacated, you know, the house and they went to back to Shirangam. And when uh, like uh, our uh, Ramanuja, when he got to know about this, so then he determined, no, this is this is it. My grasta life has come to an end. No, he told that, no, like he, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, he told to a brahmana, you go and tell my wife that her you no know, sister is pregnant and uh, they need some help, you no, know, from her. So then, um, so like she was so happy and she went to uh, you no know, attend to her you no know, family duties. So that time, Ramanuja secretly took sannyas, you know. So then uh, after that, like, you know, so the, like, this is not the first occasion. Two, three occasions this so happened. Like, you know, she used to be so caste conscious and she used to be like, uh, you know, often devotees, you know, like even Kanchipurna also once she offended. So then Ramanuja took sannyas and then he relocated after some time, he relocated to Srirangam. And then, um, so when he relocated to Srirangam, you know, like, um, Eventually, he was made, you know, two important pastimes are there. I will just mention them. Like, one is the pastime of, like, he getting uh, uh, the uh, mantra, you know, Ashtrakshari man mantra, like, uh, from Goshti Purna. So, like, he was made to go many, many times. Like, you know, this is considered to be a very powerful mantra. So, and then he was go to, you know, asked to go many, many times. And then finally, after 18 times, you know, he got this mantra with the condition that, if you tell this mantra to anybody, you will go to hell. No, and Ramanuja straight away goes, and then he claims the you no know, uh, temple uh, Gopuram, and then he calls all the people of the village, and then he tells that Om Namo Narayanaya. No, I'm not going into details. No, because we are running late of time. So then, uh, like he comes back to his guru, and then he falls at his feet, and the guru is very very angry. I told. That you should not tell this mantra to anybody, and how dare you know the moment I told you immediately you have broken the promise, so then uh, you'll go to hell. You no, know? then Ramanuja tells that okay, before that, this mantra like was told anybody who chants this mantra, it is for sure they will go to Vaikuntha. You no, know? so that is why uh, our Gaudi Vaishnava devotees don't chant because they want to go to Goloka. <laughs> so, no. anyways, so like uh, for. Then Ramanuja tells that if me one person going to hell can facilitate so many people going to Vaikuntha, so then I then I am very happy to go to hell. So when his spiritual master, Nagoshti Purna, heard this statement from Ramanuja, he fell flat at the feet of Ramanuja and he told that you accept me as your disciple. So in this way, like uh, you no, know, so many things happened, and then. Um, so Ramanuja was made the head priest 
of the Shirangam temple. So he also had to take up management. You know? So then he, when he went into management, he saw that there is so much of corruptions that are happening in the temple. So then he cut short all the things and he streamlined the management. And the previous head priest, you know, he was a very wealthy person and his income got cut you know, because of all this managerial restructuring. So then uh, he was very angry at this and he wanted to poison Ramanuja and kill him. So two occasions he tried. So in the second occasion, what happened? In Charnamrit, he mixed the poison and he gave. And uh, when Ramanuja took it, you know, he was kind of went delirious and then he went out of the temple in that state. And then next day, you know, like uh, he thought that this head priest thought that Ramanuja is good, dead and gone. And next day when he sees Ramanuja, he is still in spiritual trance with full of tears and things like that. And when he saw that, he told that, no, he thought this is not an ordinary person. No, he is a very, very great personality and he fell at his feet and begged forgiveness. And Ramanuja forgives him and you know, accepts him back into the uh, this one. So in this way, like Ramanuja performed many, many wonderful activities. So one of the great contributions of Ramanuja is that he structured you know, like what Srila Prabhupada often says, Varanashrama Acharavata Purushena Parabhuma and Vishnu Rara Dete Pansar. So, like Srila Prabhupada often tells that, like 50% of my mission is still pending, you know, to establish Varanashrama Dharma. So, that particular thing, if you see, you no know, Ramanuja was amazingly he established, you know, this uh, four Varanas and four Ashramas. And especially, like he, you know, built this and demonstrated in the holy dam of uh, Melkotai, you know, where. Uh, like, you no, know, he made this, you no know, structuring of the social system and he made, you no, know, he gave very amazing, uh, you know, systems of, uh, like, you know, how the Grahasthas should live and Grahasthas should actually conduct their uh, life and things like that. So, Ramanuja was like a very, very amazing, uh, you know, spiritual master. So, in fact, he had, uh, like, his disciples count, I was just seeing, 700 sannyasi disciples and 1,200 Grasta disciples were used to attend every day his classes you know, in Sri Rangam. You know, that's what his, uh, this one was. And uh, you know, he was a very amazing personality. So, at one point in time, Sri Rangam, you know, this place was ruled by Chola king, you know, where uh, you know, they were Shaivites and they were like very much uh, against the Vaishnava principles. And they wanted to kill Ramanuja again. And then, you know, that time, you know, he went to Melkote and uh, you know, during the time he preached in that region and you know, he converted you know, many people there, you know, a Jain king, uh, you know, he converted you know, Bitti Deva into Vishnu Vardhan and then uh, he established you know, solid uh, uh, systems of worship you know, all over in uh, Karnataka region, you know, Mysore, Karnataka and you know, those regions like uh, he actually preached and uh, you know, he wrote a commentary on Sri Bhashya and he also wrote, uh, he also gave a disciple you know, named Parashara Bhatta. So, who became the next successor. So, in this way, he fulfilled his spiritual master's instruction, Yamanacharya's instruction of uh, you know, all the three instructions, like you know, whatever you know, he had pending in his hand. So, all of them he fulfilled. So, in the same way, like we as the followers of Srila Prabhupada, so we also should work hard you know, towards propagating Krishna consciousness. And specifically, we have a mandate you know, to you know, make Bangalore a Krishna conscious city. So, we should try to practice intensely and preach intensely and um, you know, uh, in this way, please the spiritual masters you know, of our line. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Gaura Bhakta Vanda Ki Jai, Hare Krishna. Questions? From there, to the places from the Kirakam. And during my Amara Jaya, so what? For the wonderful blessings. Let's say what I'm going to try to go to shopping for the free book of Amara Jaya. Very close. Very close. So, what do you have about Amara Jaya and the free book? That's time you only allow me to share it. Very good.